Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Nate here, and it's been a while since I made a video for you guys, and the reason for that actually is I've uh, been building the computer that you see behind me. So the reason I went about building this system is because when I purchased the late 2012 iMac of November last year, my intent was to upgrade a lot of the components on the inside. Uh, I was hoping to upgrade the RAM, upgrade the hard drive, and install my own SSD uh, because I had actually made those upgrades on the previous 2011 iMac. Now unfortunately this year, with the new design of the iMac and that 5mm edge, upgrading a lot of those components became much harder, and I didn't want to risk opening up the system damaging any components or anything like that so I ended up returning that system so that's not to say that the uh, 2012 iMac is a, a bad machine at all uh, it's got a great design and the performance is there just if you're willing to pay you know the, the premiums that they charge uh, for those upgrades and also you know by nature an all-in-one design really isn't meant to be used or upgradable anyway so uh, the, the, the term that a lot of people give uh, the system that I have here is a, is a Hackintosh. That means that you're running uh, OS X on non-Apple hardware. So in this instance, I have Mountain Lion 10.8 running on my system as well as Windows 8. And thus far, uh, it's been a really great experience. So I'm going to be doing a video series. You know, I'll talk about the components that I, uh, in, in, a, in future videos, I'll talk about the components that I have on this system and components you might want to use for your own Hackintosh. I'll do a performance video where we'll run some uh, stress tests and things like that and see how the computer performs. Um, so in this video though, I, sh I just simply wanted to do an introduction to the system, talk about some of the pros and cons of building your own system. So first and foremost is price. You can save a ton of money by building your own computer because first and foremost you're taking labor out of the equation, but also you're purchasing the components individually directly from uh, the companies that manufacture those components. So there's no premium added on that a lot of the computer manufacturers add when you want to you know, upgrade things like Apple will do. Um, so for example, you know, if you wait for discounts to come on certain components on you know, websites, you can save yourself a ton of money. I waited for the GTX 680 to go on sale at Newegg and I ended up getting it for $289 after a mail-in rebate. Uh, that's a really great price. So if you set a budget for a computer and you end up saving more than expected on certain components, you know, of course you can pocket that money and just save it or you could use it to get uh, better components for your system as well. So you know, that's one of the nice things of building your own system. Next up then is user upgradability. So let's say you know later uh, this year when uh, Intel releases their new Haswell chipset, I want to upgrade to that. So maybe I'll replace the CPU in my system and my motherboard, but keep my graphics cards, my hard drives, and everything else in the system intact. I can easily do that since I've built this system. Now with a, an iMac, you know you really can't do that. If you need more graphics power or more CPU power, you have to purchase an entirely new system. And last but not least, you can also get better performance out of a Hackintosh system. Um, there are you know, different things you can do to, to achieve better performance than you know, the systems that Apple sells. For example, I can overclock the CPU that I have here and get faster, uh, you know, a faster speed on it. So I currently have mine up, uh, overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz. Uh, the one that Apple sells would be clocked at 3.5 gigahertz with the turbo boost up to 3.9. Uh, but since mine can go up to 4.3, of course, I'll achieve better performance. Uh, other things you could do uh, is you know put a whole bunch of SSDs in your system. I could put those in a RAID configuration and get some really fast uh, read and write speeds. And also, you know, specifically connecting it to the iMac that has a mobile graphics uh, um, card on the inside. With this, I have a desktop graphics card, which of course is going to uh, give better performance than what a mobile graphics card would. So those are, I think, the three uh, main benefits. Those are price, uh, user upgradeability, and the ability to get better performance out of your system. So for the cons, uh, the first one I would say is there's no Apple support. This isn't a genuine Apple system, so it's not like you're going to be able to go into an Apple store and get support if you need any help with it. Now, I've been working with OS X for a long time. I'm very comfortable with it, and I can troubleshoot you know, any issues that I have on my own. If you're not very good with computers, building your own system probably isn't a good idea because if you have trouble with it, you're really not going to be able to call up customer support uh, and get any help with it. Now the second one I would say is design. Apple products have great design. The iMac with its 5mm edge you know, looks amazing and it's also very portable and lightweight. The, the system that I have here of course is much bigger and bulkier. Now in terms of portability I never take my desktop anywhere and I'll probably you know, just put this system under my desk somewhere and uh, that'll just be you know, just fine. But of course if you need something that's you know, uh, more portable, more lightweight and that it's all in one, you definitely want to go with Apple's iMac. 
One last major con uh, with building your own Mac deals with software updates. So in order to get OS X running on a computer that you've built, you need to use certain tools to make sure the system is stable and all the components are functioning properly. So let's say when Apple comes out with 10.9 later this year, you may not be able to get that right away because those tools need to be updated first. So if you always want to have the latest software updates as soon as they come out, uh, having a Hackintosh probably isn't the best option uh, for you. Uh, luckily for myself, I still do have a genuine iMac and MacBook Pro in my household, so I'll be able to use those if I want to do any uh, developer preview videos of 10.9 as well as a review of 10.9. Uh, when it is released. So this is just an introduction video to the system I built and some of the pros and cons of building your own Hackintosh. Uh, let me know what you think about this in a comment down below and I will see you guys in the next video where I cover the components that I have in my system.